Welcome to KJV Cafe, where we explore great truths from God's holy word in a simple, down-to-earth fashion. Romans 10:17 shows us where faith comes from. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's grow our faith together in the cafe today. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. Grab your Bible and a hot cup of coffee or tea and join us now as we explore God's holy word. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome to the cafe. I hope you're doing great today. Hopefully today has been a blessing to you. If it hasn't, guess what? You will be blessed by hearing this. I believe it. I'm blessed by preparing it. God is good. His word, word were never, never returns void. Amen. It's always good to get into the word. It's always good to spend some time in the word. We thank God today for his great gift to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that free gift of salvation and giving us the word. So we're always having something to reference, to look at, to study. And it's such a blessing. And today we are speaking about deliverance. Uh, it's a several part series here on deliverance, Psalm 50, verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble, that'd be the Lord, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Beautiful verse. I love it. Three parts. Part one, call upon God in the day of trouble. You're in trouble. What do you do? Call upon God. Part two, he will deliver you. Part three, you give him glory. So simple. Call upon God when you're in trouble. God delivers you. You give him glory. And there is examples of that in the Bible. Amen. Think of Paul and Silas and the prison break and all. And uh, they were praising God. They were singing and praising God. And he, he, uh, he got them out. Amen. Or Peter, when he got Peter out prison. You think of the Israelites facing death from Pharaoh and being chased down to the Red Sea and God parting the waters and delivering them on dry land, no longer in bondage. Uh, You think of us being delivered by Christ and our sin nature and no way that we could do it on our own. We can never deliver ourselves from our own sin because the sin nature is unable to become clean without that shedding of blood, that perfect spotless lamb, Jesus Christ. And so we see that we're delivered by God through Jesus Christ. So God, the father sent Jesus Christ, his son to deliver us. And when we accept Christ as savior, he gives us the Holy spirit. That's the Holy Trinity right there. We have the Holy spirit living within us and the comforter is there and God's consistently delivering us. And I've, I've spoken here Uh, in the past about sin and about affliction and how God's delivered us from those. Today, I'm speaking of fear. God delivers us from fear. Has there ever been a time in this world with so much fear? Now, maybe there has. I could imagine uh, World War I or II. I could imagine uh, our own homeland being attacked. I could imagine, um, you know, people hearing of the Holocaust and so forth, I can imagine these times of great fear, maybe in the uh, recessions of the past and losing, wiping out savings accounts. Uh, 9-11 was a fearful time. I mean, there's been times that has been fearful in our country, but certainly we are in a time, uh, if not of the greatest fear, then close to the greatest fear we've ever seen as a country. And fear is all around us. That's just the national fear. I haven't even gotten to the individual fear how we're affected by it, how people fear um, everything. They fear, have anxiety about so much. And think about it. Now everything is digital and technology is taken over. And uh, in a way, I'm thankful for it in the sense I make a living with technology. I work with computers and so forth. But in another way, it's really removed a huge part of of civilization, uh, socializing. Um, I remember in college, I believe it was, being assigned a book that to read called Bowling Alone and the idea that people didn't go bowling together in leagues. And this was back in the 90s or early 2000s. Uh, I now see 20 years later, it's only gotten worse. I got a teenager at home that I love very much, Kobe, uh, and just love this kid. He definitely gets the behavior award, the best behaved kid in the house by far. He is such a sweet kid. He's a preacher too. Maybe we'll get him on the radio one day. He's just a wonderful young man. And Kobe, uh, you know, 
I talked to him about, Hey, what you're doing with your virtual classes and your FaceTime and your friends and you know, you're online with everything is virtual. I said, that's not normal. And I said, I'm not blaming you. You're just following along with how society is, but that's not normal. And so what I'm getting at here is with all this technology, it removes so much of the personal contact and it creates more of the unknown, which creates fear. The unknown is oftentimes what breeds fear. Think about it. People are afraid in the dark because they can't see. Amen. People are anxious about things that they can't figure out or don't know. Like they're anxious about tomorrow because they don't know what tomorrow holds. But God says, don't worry about it. Let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. Uh, God's in control. He's sovereign. He doesn't want us to have fear. Can I share a verse with you here today? 2 Timothy 1.7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I love that verse. We were um, in our old house. I probably told this story before. And we had that, uh, this cool paint on our kitchen wall that was like, it's called chalkboard paint. And you put it on the wall and you can write with chalk, which we probably need to do for our kids. But uh, now that we've got younger kids in the house, but we had, uh, we had that paint up there and we would uh, write different verses up there. And I put this verse up there uh, and kept it up there, kept it at the top of that, that chalkboard wall for probably six months to a year. And I would just look at it and read it because it was a time of difficulty and of great fear uh, as I was dealing with some health issues and uh, having a lot of uh, problems. And I didn't know what was going to happen to me. And I was, I was kind of getting worse. And I would read that, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind, Second Timothy 1. Seven, and reading it uh, physically, I would calm down. It would calm me. The Lord's word it soothes, doesn't it? You know, it gives you this peace, doesn't it? Uh, he promises that uh, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. That's biblical, amen. Out of the book of Isaiah, I believe. Uh, but also intellectually, I'd kind of chew the cut and think about that. God, God has not given us the spirit of fear. He didn't give us the spirit of fear. He does not want us to be afraid. And so number one, God delivers us from fear by helping us understand that he does not want us to fear. And that he gives us a power. He gives us power. And, and you can get into, well, what spiritual power does the believer have? The believer has a lot of spiritual power. If you're saved, if you have the Holy Spirit living within you, you have power over a lot of things. Amen. Uh, the devil doesn't have dominion over you. I heard a preacher say one time, I believe it was Adrian Rogers, uh, if the devil could kill you, how, you know, why wouldn't he have killed you already? Right. And you know, if he could dwell in you, why wouldn't he have done it? He would have. Amen. But he can't. So, um, he just can try to scare you, right? So for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. We have power and of love, amen, and of love and of a sound mind. And so we have uh, this ability to love and this idea of getting out of our own heads and loving others and uh, bearing others' burdens and being there for others and showing great love and of a sound mind, of mentally being strong, mentally uh, being focused on what matters, mentally uh, clearing out a lot of the, the things that bothers us, bother us, the anxieties, the stress. I want you to think about here today, what can you do, right, to help God deliver you from fear in your life? Now, that might sound a little different, like what can you do to help God? But no, what I'm saying is I believe that God wants us to take this verse literally and then give us something to chew on, to think about. Maybe we don't need to watch the nightly news every night. If the nightly news is making us afraid and is the nightly news is all nasty, okay? Uh, my father worked in journalism his whole life, TV news, and he told me that in the newsroom they had a saying, if it bleeds, it leads. And what that meant is if it was a bloody story, they'd make that the top story. And you know that, you know how the media does things. And I'm not saying specific outlets, they all do it, amen. They all do it because they're trying to get ratings and so forth. But you don't have to watch it. Like, you know, you don't, somebody, maybe someone is turning it on for you, but more than likely you're turning it on or you're looking on your phone or maybe it's the newspaper or maybe it's the internet. Maybe it's a website or a forum or a blog, or maybe it's social media. Oh my goodness. Social media. I had to shut mine off. Amen. I'm not afraid to say that. I shut that thing off uh, a couple of years ago and I'm so glad I did because there's all kinds of arguments on there. And the, the human side of you can get torn up by being on social media these days, all the arguments. And yes, we have a, a ministry page on Facebook. Uh, and, uh, we have, uh, I have to do some stuff with work on there, but personally, if you don't have to be on there, don't go on there. 
Amen. Don't go on there. I know, I know social media can do a lot of good. I know that. But at the same time, there's a lot of fear mongering on there. And if you don't believe me, just look up uh, online or, or however you want to do it. Look up uh, all this information that's come out about some of these social networks prioritizing stories that make people uh, very angry, that elicit a lot of emotion, sensationalism. It's been around forever. There, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So when it comes to deliverance from fear, understand God didn't give us the spirit of fear and understand that he gave us power and we can use that power, even the love within us and having a sound mind to then get away and depart from these things that make us afraid. Maybe you have a friend that calls you every day and just dumps all this stuff in your ear. Tell the friend, look, you know what? I can't have you call me every day and dump all this stuff in my ear. You're going to have to call somebody else because God didn't give me the spirit of fear and I don't want to deal with this. I have power over this. And I have a sound mind. I want to use it. Whatever it is, I've given you simple examples, but I want to inspire you to not be afraid to, to, to live life boldly for Christ. Uh, I like Les Feldick. I like to watch his Bible studies. And he talks about all the time how after Christ had uh, been resurrected, after the cross and after he'd been resurrected, how bold everybody was in the book of Acts. All the apostles and disciples, all of those serving him were so bold after the resurrection because they had seen Jesus risen. Amen. They were no longer afraid. They were completely bold. They were all sold out to God. Amen. And, and there's, that's a big contrast from before when they all kind of went their own way before the death, amen, before the death on the cross. And so we see here this idea that when we get on fire for God and we have the Lord living within us, we can be bold for Christ and we don't need to be afraid and we can just sell out to God. A good rule of thumb is if something's making you afraid, remove that and replace it with the Bible. And as you get into God's word, God's word won't make you afraid. If you're a believer, what it's going to do, if you're not a believer, it'll make you one. I believe if you seek him enough and he'll reveal himself to you through his word. But if you're a believer, what's, what's going to do is going to edify you. You're going to feast on that word. You're going to feed on that word. It's going to strengthen you. It's going to give you confidence. It's going to give you peace. It's going to give you a new perspective. It's going to give you guidance. It's the living word. It's a treasure chest that never runs out. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. It's the greatest book of all time. It's a true book and it teaches us so much. So let's feast on the word. Maybe you're like me. Maybe you have a morning devotional time, but in the evening, if something is giving you fear, if something's creating anxiety, get rid of that thing, whatever that thing is, and go to the book, amen? Spend time in the book. It doesn't have to be just in the morning. It can be in the evening too, or vice versa. You get the idea. Psalm 32, seven. I love this verse. Psalm 32, seven. Thou art my hiding place, Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, say law. Thou art my hiding place. Oh, I love that. What do you want to do when you're afraid? You go and hide somewhere, right? You want to crawl under a rock. You want to go somewhere safe. You want to get into a, a safe house. You know, if your hurricanes, storms come and there's, you're afraid, what are you going to do? You're going to go to your shelter. Psalm 32, seven, thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. God is able to preserve us from the trouble, from deliver us from the affliction, from the affliction of fear. God will deliver us from it and he will compass us about. He'll be all about us, all around us with songs of deliverance. Amen. That's our God. Amen. I'm telling you, pray to God, seek God, and he will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. And he will give you that, that, that peace of knowing that it'll be okay. Knowing that you'll be delivered one way or another, knowing that to die is gain, that you'll be with Christ in heaven forever, but that Christ lives within you through the working of the Holy Spirit while you're here on earth. And that you don't need to be afraid. Don't give the devil an inch. Celebrate today. Be happy, be joyful today because we have Christ with us. He is in us and with us and will be for an eternity. And we can take that to the bank because it's in God's word. And we don't need to be afraid. We have power over fear. Let's use it. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you listening. Take care. God bless and amen.
Thanks for listening to this episode of KJV Cafe. Have a question for Pastor Clark? Email him directly at clark at enduringpromise.org or visit kjvcafe.com and click the envelope button on the homepage. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. We'll close today with Psalm 119, verses 166 through 168. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee.